So the, the heart chakra is a, a real plasmoid. It's a, it's a vortex. It's a double vortex, really. It's like a double torus, like a, a donut, okay, a hole in the center, or two donuts stacked on each other. So at the top is where the energy comes in, and at the bottom is where it goes out in our developmental sequence. In our, it comes in from the senses, it's from the field, and we quantize it at the heart, make it our own, by attending to it and by assigning meaning to it. And meaning is another layer of trans-dimensionality that what this means to me includes, includes my past experience with similar sensations, similar experiences. So <clears throat> house means something. Oh, so this thing that's a house means something that has to do with all those other memories of house. Whether two-dimensional drawings or real experiences walk through, uh, there's, there's all, and the feelings associated with it, the colors, the forms, all of that is, it's like a network of, of meaning attached through past experience. All those different wormholes of the spirit of connecting the M-state minerals, the spirit minerals, from the here-now experience to those past experiences, from those past experiences to other past experiences. So these are all little superconductive channels of connectivity, which is why it's all simultaneously present, because in superconductivity, there is no time. There is no, no uh, resistance to flow. There's no delay. It's like the experience that people have when they leave the body at the end of life, near-death experiences, where suddenly all of these experiences flow through in the flash of an eye. They still have the connectivity, so there's a, a, a flow to it, but there's no time dimension per se. Okay, so, so, so attention then leads to a signing of meaning. We hear a sound, I hear a sound, oh. And then I attend to it, I hear it, I, I focus my attention and I discern the nature of that sound. Oh, it's a ringing, it's, you know, foam. That has, that's a meaning that I've assigned to it. And so this flow moves in a certain direction from receiving grace to giving out meaning, gratitude. And we, we can easily reverse that flow. You know, this is a self-governing being. And so if I as assign my attention to something that I'm not receiving, I want... I want that, I want this, I want lunch, I want candy, I want to be liked, I, you know, I want to be important, I want to be heard. The, all the things that we want is a reversal of flow at the top of the heart chakra where our energy now, our attentional energy is going out into the field saying, I don't have, I'm not receiving, I want this, that, that I don't have, I don't have the experience. We can't have and want at the same time. If we reverse our attention onto the things that we're receiving, oh, I see my vision, I hear my, my hearing, I feel my skin, I feel the emotional state and the physical state inside my body, I feel the position and posture of my joints, I, uh, I smell the, the air, I taste the taste in my mouth. So I'm being here now in the present receiving what I receive, that all helps to restore the flow in the proper direction. Being with the breath, at, with, that, with that slow breath cycle of 0.1 hertz cycle, that restores coherence in the, in the lung, in the metal element, and that cascades into the heart to a one hertz, one beat per second heartbeat. That both of those entrain into a coherent state, which means when we get close to that state, it's like a magnet, draws us in automatically. We don't have to think about it. If we can use thought, we can use our attention to guide ourselves to the right neighborhood and we'll be drawn into the right, you know, the, right, into the right church. Uh, so, so we go from wanting, desire, not having, state of deficiency, to a state of receiving, of having, of receiving grace. Receiving, the senses are a grace. To be present here now, this moment is a grace. We can be not present in the moment, 
where we can be more fully present in the moment, in a, which is a relaxed state, it's essential to open the senses and receive all of that energy, all that information. Two-thirds of the nerve current to the brain comes through the two eyes. Not, not just through the central vision, that's a large part of it, but through the full periphery, 180 degrees of awareness. You put your hands out, stretch way out to the sides, and wiggle your fingers and bring them in. When can you see them without? Now you can attend here and be aware out here, and you're also going to divide your attention because you're still looking here. If you have only central attention, now you're going to have to look at the fingers when you see them moving. But if you can learn to divide your attention in a gentle way, in an open way, not divided like multitasking. Multitasking is two hard centers of attention. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm driving and I'm putting on my makeup and I'm talking on my cell phone and I'm thinking about, you know, worrying about being late to work and I'm thinking about the traffic. And it's very inefficient. What's very efficient is to take in the traffic, all of it, the side view mirror, the rear view mirror, what's happening in there without even looking, to see them, to sense that space, to visualize the space behind you that those mirrors reflect information from, to, to feel your body, to feel the, your hand on the wheel, to be present with uh, whatever it is. Maybe, there's, maybe you're playing music, but to be aware of the space and the sounds, the honking horn, the, the screeching tires, or the, the truck behind you, to be present in the here now, and, and not so divided in like worrying about something else. You might go into contemplation. I mean, there's times when you might drive and get to your destination and realize, whoa, how did I do that? I don't remember driving. We've probably all at some point in our life had that experience of autopilot because your attention was divided. You were driving just automatically. You weren't, you weren't, you were taking it in, you're responding to it, but your, your thoughts were focused somewhere else, not in the here now. So you don't want to do that too, uh, uh, too much. It uh, could be dangerous. <clears throat> but uh, we have that capacity. But uh, that's, that's a safer thing to do with uh, maybe something that's a safer activity than driving. Or we can go into a meditative state. It's great with prayer. You can do a, a repetitive prayer where the, the prayer just goes on its own and your mind goes into contemplation, meditation. So the, the bottom of the heart, when its direction is reversed, we have resentment. It's like, I don't have gratitude. It's like, I'm not happy about what I got and I, I'm mad, I resent, I, you know. Uh, uh. So we're not, we're not allowing that, holding on to that resentment allow, doesn't allow the energy to flow the proper direction through the heart. <clears throat> 